Hello Unique Game Fan, the last big month of releases is coming up in November, with some long in development games finally coming out, such as Fabula Once Upon a Space Time, a pixel art roguelite set in space where ship design is the equivalent of medieval knights with swinging arms and melee weapons, giving it quite an interesting feel. You're battling your way through the galaxy in order to save your kingdom through what is essentially medieval jousting but in space, looking pretty sick and unique. A small disclosure here, since some games that I previewed in October got delayed to November, such as Beneath Orisia and Nine Years of Shadows, so I will not cover those again, so let's move on to A Little to the Left, a wonderful cozy little puzzle game all about rearranging household items in ways that you might not see coming. In some ways, puzzles are hidden, so you need to play around with them, whether it be sorting objects by size, colour, shape, etc. Where some of these have multiple solutions which is interesting and will soothe that OCD part of your brain. We have seen an increasing number of third-person roguelites where one of interest is We Who Are About To Die, a gladiator simulator where you take control of such a warrior diving into the arena in search of wealth and glory. Most interestingly, there is a full physics-based combat system which you need to master, where the developer particularly points out that you're in control at all times, never having to sit through an attack animation if you don't want to. There is permadeath as well as RPG-like progression systems, like leveling and equipment, looking like an ambitious title with potential. Zero Civet was one of the big winners of the Steam Nix Festival, a survival sandbox title set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, so again, nothing too crazy or new, but it does look well made. You have a home base which you can upgrade and customize, venturing out into the wilderness when you are ready to scavenge more resources, looking to have a good gameplay loop. Weapon and gun customization looks in depth as well, all wrapped up with a pixel art look which I love. I know, I know, Soulstone Survivors is yet another Vampire Survivors like Bullet Heaven title, but based on the reception to its demo, has quickly shot up in popularity and has become one of the most anticipated games. Interestingly, this developer is also working on a traditional, top-down rope light version of this game, but it appears that they have chosen to focus and release the Bullet Heaven variant first, where it checks all the boxes of this subgenre, including swarms of enemies, XP and loot exploding out of enemies and sitting on the ground, as well as the ability to fire off powerful screen-clearing attacks, where there must be something special to this game that warrants it that level of attention. I'm very impressed with the look of The Entropy Center, a first-person puzzle game that looks to be evoking Portal, but with a central mechanic of manipulating time instead. It looks like you're able to pause and reverse time with your gun, set on board a space station orbiting Earth, really nailing that sci-fi theme and looks very good. 
apparently, an extinction level event has occurred and you are the last person alive. With the truth behind this situation located at the core of this facility, having a great central mystery as well. I realize that there are quite a number of roguelites on this list, but hey, that's just what's coming out next month, where we are looking at Bravery and Greed here, a self-described roguelite beat-em-up dungeon crawler, but looks more like a standard platformer variant to me. You and up to three other players are battling all sorts of monsters in a fantasy setting with plenty of loot and progression to keep things interesting. Nothing too crazy in terms of innovation, but it looks very well made, but a co-op focus should make it fun with friends. I honestly cannot believe that TFM The First Man is finally releasing into Steam Early Access next month, where I've had my eye on this long in development colony sim for what seems like years now, going back to 2017 or 2018 if I'm not mistaken. Similar to games like RimWorld or Clan Folk, this has you in command of a colony of villagers, this time in a fantasy setting where you lead the first humans on the planet struggling to survive. It is not realistic since there are goblins and dragons in this, but I hope that the management systems are deep enough. Additionally, it has a good look as well, with what appears to be quite the amount of variety in biomes to explore, so if you love your colony sims, this is the title to get. I still cannot believe that Ghost Song is releasing after so many years, a Metroidvania title that even I thought would never see the light of day, having brushed it off as vaporware as recently as one year ago, but this developer managed to get the support of Humble Games as a publisher, who I assume gave them the resources to finish up the game, so here we are. This is a sci-fi entry where you reawaken on a desolate moon, having to explore and uncover ancient secrets while fending off cosmic horrors. I'm sorry that From early previews or demos, I remember there being quite the variety of weapon options in this, mixing both melee and ranged weapons, so I do hope that this is cohesive enough after many years in development and wish them all the best for release. instead. I'm a fan of developer Super Mega Team since their hand-drawn art is one of the best in the business, where the next title is the self-described shoot-em-up metroidvania The Night Witch. I love my shoot 'em ups which makes the action of interest, but I might not agree with the metroidvania description depending on how they deal with unlocking and access to new areas. The deck building system looks neat as well with impressive animations, so let's see if this makes my list of the best in the future. Mm -hmm. 